Okay, welcome back. You know, before we put the ejector pins in, I just realized that I made a huge mistake. You know, that happens. We're designing quickly. Uh, when I make these videos, sometimes I go really quickly. But what I realized is when I processed my core and cavity blocks, I had put in radiuses of different sizes on the insert block against the pocket. And what that left behind, as you can see, is a thin little piece of, well, nothing that we want. So we need to fix that. Now, how do you fix that? Well, thankfully, Top Solid is a parametric software. So all I have to do is go back to the cavity process. This is my history tree here. I double click on it and say, you know what? I don't actually want the fillets. Let's turn them off because I don't need them in this case. Perfect. I've resolved the problem. Now here I may clear this out. I may clear that out. You may do lots of other items to make this exactly how you want. But at the end of the day, it was easy to go in, make a correction, and of course, Top Solid updated flawlessly. Now in this last step, what I want to do is I want to bring everything back. So I'm going to bring literally everything back to have a look at what we've done. And now I want to add some ejector pins. Now to do that, first I want to turn off the A side. Why not? You know, I'm going to get rid of these objects here. And I use a lot of different ways to work with visualization. That's the beauty of Top Solid. There's no single way to do things. You can work as freely as you want. And I'm going to hide maybe these objects right here as well. Okay? Because what I want to see, and I'll turn off the components, what I want to see is how my ejector pins get put in. So let's go to the ejector pin command. I'm going to go to my pins. I'm going to put a DME inch pin. They'll be simple cylindrical pins, THX style. And I'm going to do it based on a sketch. And a sketch is the best way to do this. And here's why. I'm going to put my sketch on my XY plane. I'll look straight down at it. And I'm going to do something even really fancy. I'm going to add dynamic symmetry. To the game. Now when I add dynamic symmetry, what you're going to see is the fact that I can add, check that out, four pins at the same time. Cool. It allows me to design symmetrically. So I'm going to go right there, right there. Perfect. Maybe we'll set this to 3 16 and we'll put one right there. Good enough. And you know what? We'll put some right there too. And I think that's enough. You know what? I'm going to turn off dynamic symmetry, make it simple symmetry about OY, validate, and again, maybe this one will put a nice big ejector pin in. It'll be great right there. Now, the beauty of everything that I just did is all those circles are on that side too. Now, I'm going to quickly go turn off symmetry completely, and I can start constraining this. And I'm only going to constrain a couple of these just to give you the idea. So I can add my dimension there. It's at whatever size I want it to be. Perfect. Up. Oh, that's too much. Let's make it 0.5. That's better. Maybe I want this dimension to be off my zero here. Awesome. And let's make that... 3 inch uh, 5625, good enough. You get the idea. Maybe I'll do one more type of constraint here just to open your minds to different ways of working. Let's go ahead and do a centering constraint. I want to center between this edge and this edge, this point. And then I want to center between this edge and this edge, this point. Perfect. Now that pin and its three brothers are fully constrained as well. Nice. From here, I'm going to validate the sketch, and then Top Solid, again, is going to do that heavy lifting for us. And here's the cool part, okay? Now, in this case, it's putting in on all the ejector pins, and you can see the pins that need to be keyed are, of course, keyed. That's just the Top Solid way. It's what we like to do. We like to do the simple things for you, okay? If I go to my keyed process, I can play with the orientation, say, you know what? I want it to be 90 degrees like that. Perfect. From there, I want to deal with the trimming, okay? Because right now... It's trimming to what? Well, it's trimming to the cavity shape. Why? Well, because this was imported geometry. We don't truly know where everything is. So in this case, you got to help us. Okay? And how are you going to do that? It's simple. I'm going to activate my two plastic parts. I'm going to turn off automatic detection. Remove that. And add to it that shape there. And this shape here. Okay? Now, if I go and turn those off, we should be able to see that it's automatically trimming. Let's see what happens. We're going to hit our validate button. It's going to ask us to define all the processes we want. For example, I can come in here and say, you know what, my boring length on the big diameter pins, I want that to be one inch. Uh, for this clearance here, I want it to be a 16th. For that clearance there, I want it to be a 32nd. For that clearance there, I want it to be a 16th as well. You get the idea. You can pretty much set what you want for everything. And you're going to do that for every diameter pin. So I'm just going to click OK, and I'm going to let it do this thing automatically for us so that I can just show you the result quickly. And here, if we zoom up, you can see 
There's that one inch travel of that 3 8 pin. Everything is trimmed to that molding detail automatically. You're in full control. All of the key processes have been done for you. It's fantastic. Since I started down this path, why don't we finish this and this will be, will be where we complete this little series of videos. You can see right here there are some heads that are colliding. I think here let's fix that too right away. So here we have a special function when heads collide. You just simply select them. The software trims them to each other and then will give you the ability to create a simplified process for it even. Maybe here we want something like that. Perfect. That took me seconds to resolve. How long did it take you to do in your software? Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please look us up online, uh, www.topsolid.com. Of course, there's our blog, blog.topsolid.com. Reach out to us. We're here to help you improve your manufacturing process.